Hello, Michael Mann here, Bike Social, joined once again by Mr. M. Burton, and you join us for the BSB show, episode number four, as we look back to Donington Park, which seems like an eternity ago, and we look forward to our trip north of the border to Knock Hill. Okay, coming up in today's show, we've got the highlights package, the TV highlights package of what happened at Donington across all three races. We are uh, going to talk about the news, which has the, there's been quite a fair amount of news happening yeah, since around. Donington uh, as we head towards Knock Hill, which is, I'm right in thinking it's the shortest circuit on the calendar, isn't you it? You would be right in thinking yeah, that. Yeah, 1.2 miles, I think. Something like that, yeah, not very long. Uh, what else have we got? We've got John McGuinness giving us some exclusive access behind the scenes in the paddock, which we recorded at Donington. And we're going to be talking to the Lamy OMG superstar that is Carl Ride. So first things first, let's have a little refresher uh, as to what happened at Donington at the last round. Carl Ride was on pole position for the Bennett's British Superbike Bike Social Sprint Race with Leon Haslam second on the grid. And Jason O'Halloran also getting off to a decent start, but it was Kyle Ride that got the whole shot into turn one. Also a good start from Andrew Irwin on the Honda. Further back, Glenn Irwin made a move on Christian Iden over at Goddard's to get himself up into the top six, but there was a bit of drama for Jack Kennedy who fell at Goddard's. Good avoiding action from Danny Bucket. Jason Halloran in second though, then started to run into trouble around about lap two or three. There was also a bit more trouble further back as Andrew Irwin saw a gap, went for it, and down went both himself and Christian Iden at the Melbourne loop. Dean Harrison went down of his own accord as well. This was the move from Tommy Bridewell as he managed to fish his way up into the top three. He went through on Jason O'Halloran, and soon Leon Haslam would make his way past as well as they went into pursuit for glory with Kyle Ride out front. Lee Jackson was making good progress as well up inside the top six. And despite a poor start to the day for Josh Brooks, his lap times were coming down as well and he'd managed to get himself into the top eight. Aslam and Glenn Irwin both made their way through eventually on O'Halloran and so too Ryan Vickers and Storm Stacey. Out front in the closing stages, Kyle Ride had a decent advantage. Leon Haslam made his move in the closing stages to try and claim second, but on the cutback, Tommy Bridewell came back through, but neither could catch Kyle Ride, who managed to make sure that he got a lights out to uh, check and flag victory, and there was a little bit extra for Jason Halloran at the end as well, with Peter Hickman nudging him over at Starkey's. He did manage to stay on board and pick up points, but it was a win for Kyle Ride, his first since the opening race of the season at Silverstone. Leon Haslam was on pole position for the second Bennett's British Superbike race of the weekend at Donington Park, but it was a rocket start for Kyle Ride that put him into P1 at Turn 1. Jason O'Halloran also got off to a decent start on his McCams Yamaha, but into Redgate corner, Leon Hasler managed to push his way through with Tommy Bridewell in hot pursuit of the leading group. Danny Kent at this stage was in fifth place, but there was drama for Glenn Irwin, who unfortunately uh, went out in the first sector. Bridewell then made his move on Leon Haslam to move up a spot, and Kyle Ride, whilst leading, made a rare error, leaving Tommy Bridewell to inherit the lead. The safety car came out, though, because of debris on the circuit, and then what a race the final five laps were. Haslam was leading, but O'Halloran came through. Haslam then bit back again. Everyone at this stage in with a shout of potentially winning the race. Tommy Bridewell then launched an attack into turn one. In the background, Josh Brooks was now fighting for a podium as well. Lee Jackson was also in the hunt for a podium. And Ryan Vickers, number seven on the OMG Yamaha, was looking for his first ever podium in Bennett's British Superbike. 
As the laps tick down, they were three and four abreast heading into the Foggy S's. At this stage, Haslam and O'Halloran side by side, clipping the curve. We're going into the green, lifting his arm up and having to let Tommy Bridewell back through. But then watch this move from number seven, Ryan Vickers, as he went from fifth up into second in one corner. As we got to the closing stages, Josh Brooks made his move on Haslam to move up into third place. And as the chequered flag came out, Jason O'Halloran got back to winning ways. He was victorious ahead of Ryan Vickers, who picked up his first podium with Brooks finishing third and taking the championship lead. The third and final race of the weekend at Donington here in Bennett's British Superbike saw Tommy Bridewell starting from pole position. But Mike, like most of the weekend, it was Kyle Ride that got the whole shot into turn one ahead of his teammate, Ryan Vickers. Danny Kent was in fourth place and Leon Haslam was making forward movement, but Bridewell punted through on Ryan Vickers to move up into second place and chase down Kyle Wright. It was a bit of drama further back as Glenn Irwin made a lovely move on Lee Jackson into the Melbourne loop with Christian Iden in hot pursuit as well. His favourite move into Redgate corner, Leon Haslam went through on Danny Kent. Further back through the order, there was a big moment for Andy Irwin, who for the third time this weekend went down and took Storm Stacy with him. No points on offer then for Andy Irwin this weekend, but plenty on offer for Carl Ride as he looked for the double victory. Leon Haslam wanted that final podium spot as well, but Glenn Irwin was fighting his way through the pack, moving through on Jason O'Halloran and then ultimately through on Ryan Vickers as well. It wasn't long before. He then made his move on Haslam to move up into the top three. Breaking down into Goddard's. Irwin put the move back on Vickers again to move up into fourth place with Kyle Wright still leading and racing on lap record pace out front. The two broke away and it was just remaining here, the fight for the last positions. Eden managed to get himself up into fifth. Ryan Vickers then capitalised when he saw a gap going through as well. And on the last lap, this was the scrap for the final podium position. Glenn Irwin just about managing to hold on with the fight against Ryan Vickers. The chequered flag was out. It's two wins in the weekend for Kyle Ride, who gets himself back into championship contention, winning ahead of the two Beer Monster Ducatis. There we are, Mr B. Seven different podium finishes across the three rounds, but it was fair to say the sort of superstar of the show was Carl Ride. Yeah, definitely, I think so. Yeah, he was uh, he was really strong, and, and I think everybody knew he was going to be strong after the test there at the start of the year where it was bitterly cold and mm. he topped the time sheets. Um, the new surface, I think, helped massively as well um, in terms of the way uh, just people could just uh, sort of push on a little bit more, if you like. Um, the surprising thing for me was the tyre choice as well, was uh, a lot of people opted to run the, the harder option rear tyre, purely and simply because the I, th I think the surface was a lot more abrasive than obviously what it has been previously, with it all being fresh tarmac, um, and Kyle reaped the benefit of that. Um, he said to us after the race actually on, on Sunday that um, he'd been there previously on his practice bike on a track day mm. um, and done loads and loads of laps on uh, used harder uh, Pirelli rubber um, and obviously a lot of other riders didn't think to do that um, and Kyle's reaped the benefits of it. He probably should have won all three races, made a little bit of a mistake in the second race on Sunday morning um, or Sunday afternoon, um, just high-sided himself coming out of, out of Redgate, um, really didn't do anything different um, just a slight little mistake on his behalf mm. and, and it saw him uh, saw him crash out of the race but yeah for me the standout performer almost the perfect weekend for him wasn't it it was almost. pole position two wins and a crash from leading yeah, yeah. Uh, who else stood out for you though I, there's definitely one name I've got in my head and that's uh, one of the newbies Mr Nesbitt yeah cracking round didn't yeah he? Charlie had a really 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 strong round um, he was strong there last year actually yeah. uh, on the Suzuki when he made his debut in the uh, in the superbike class, um, and I think he, he was sixth in the in the second race on yeah. on Sunday afternoon, mm. um, which I mean, uh, judging by the timesheets, is the, the the top Honda as well. Um, uh, albeit yes, 
only 16 of them finished the race in that in that race um but you you know you still got to finish the race so for me yeah and, and like you say probably one of the standout performers yeah who else uh, who else impressed you uh the Ducatis again are impressing me you know they're just consistent um especially you know Glenn and Tommy are, are just being really consistent at the minute picking up podiums um picking up all important points um Tommy did make a little bit of a mistake in the second race at, 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 uh, as as you've just seen um which unfortunately you know he's lost um a fair few points there but he's still in the championship lead uh, leaving the, leaving Donington Park, heading into Knock Hill, mm. albeit only by three points from his teammate and five from Josh Brooks. Um, but yeah, for me, the Ducatis, uh, again, just continue to Im- to impress. Mm. Worth uh, a big shout out for Ryan Vickers as well. Yep. Yeah. Back from injury, or almost injury free, isn't he now? Yeah, almost injury free, back from injury. Um, and that, I'll be honest, I'll, I'll hold my hands up, that was the biggest surprise of the weekend. I was not expecting Ryan to get on the podium. Um, especially after the um, the operation that he'd had on his on his wrist just a couple of weeks before, really, um, and I still during the race I still stood there and thought, I don't think this is going to last. I can't see him lasting mm. this long. Um, and to be fair to him, he wasn't far off the win. He really wasn't. I think yeah. judging by well, there, he was, he's only three, three tenths, tenths off the three tenths off the win, um, and put his best lap uh, put his best lap. More or less, right at the end of the race, you know, two laps before the end of the race was his fastest lap. Um, so yeah, again, really, really impressive. Um, but it's kind of time for Ryan to step up now. You know, he's had three, four years in the championship, um, and that is his first podium. You know, he's jumped on the championship winning bike, um, and he's he has to impress. Mm. I think he knows that. The team know that. Um, and yeah, to be fair to him, he seems happy. You know, I saw him. Wandering around at the at the Alaman TT, big smile on his face, really happy. Um, tested well at Knock Hill, I think, during the break as well. So, yeah, really, really impressed to see Ryan and happy to see Ryan on the podium. Mm. Seven, second, and fourth, uh, which puts him where in the championship. Let's have a little look here. Uh, that right, looks ninth. ninth. Good for him. And yeah, yeah coming back from that injury is, is never going to be easy when you're trying to manhandle one of these brutes. Uh, yeah. Mega, who could have done better? Who should have done better? Um, I think Josh, Josh Brooks would have expected to do a lot better yep. than what he did. Um, I'm not saying that he did bad, um, but I, you know, I, I still think he, he he could have done a lot better and probably was expecting a lot better as well. It's one of his favourite circuits, yeah. Um, so yeah, for me, Josh probably could have done a lot better, um, but he's still third in the championship. Uh, five, uh, judging by yeah, that, five. five points behind behind the behind the leader. It's, it's um, tight, yeah. Top ten. The, really sorry, close. the top five riders are, are split by ten points. Yeah, just ten points. Yeah, it's really really close. So heading into this weekend at Knock Hill, mm. um, you know, I think it's going to be a war of attrition between between those five. Um, but yeah, for for me, I think Josh could have done a, a little bit better. Peter Hickman, I was expecting a little bit more from Pete. Mm. Um, and to be fair, I was expecting a little bit more from Jack Kennedy as well. It is a little bit of a Yamaha circuit, suits the Yamaha, as you've seen with Carl Ride winning two out of the three. So it's, I was expecting a little bit more from from Jack Kennedy. Um, probably the biggest standout as well was probably Lee Jackson. Um, Lee was really solid. You know, fourth in the fir- in the in the sprint race, uh, and then fifth and sixth in the in the two longer races on Sunday. So especially after uh, the, the start to the season that Lee's had. He's not had the best of starts to the season, uh, and I think he'll admit that, the team will admit that as well. So to see him up there was, was a real positive. There's one name that I'm going to mention now, and, and we can kind of use it as a bit of a transition into the news section. Uh, <laughs> the news. And, yeah, Andrew Irwin. Yes, Andrew Irwin. So um, three DNFs. Yes. Which nobody ever wants to see. Him, no. the team, no one really. Yes. You know, fans, um, family. And unfortunately... It made a couple of really silly, silly mistakes. Probably uh, is fair to say, um, and I think Andrew would be, would would sort of echo the, that word as well. Um, he he took out Storm Stacy in one race, um, took out Christian Eden in another. So it 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 kind of feels, uh, for me anyway, it kind of feels like oh it's Andrew again, that kind <clears> of thing, um, uh, and it's no surprise. Um, but I do feel quite sorry. I do, I do feel quite sorry for him because he is a racer. He is pushing hard, mm. and it just feels like he's got like a magnet to him. Do you know, like the like a magnet of taking people out. It always just feels like it's always on Andrew. It's always Andrew's fault. Um, and and I I feel quite. I do feel quite sorry for him. You know, you you saw him after Donington Park. Um, he looked really down and disappointed with the way he's performed. And 
I suppose he'll be feeling even more down and disappointed right now. Yeah, big time. So so here's what happened. Uh, after Donington and, and before um, the Isle of Man TT, yeah. the, between Donington and, and Notkill, there's obviously a, a break for the TT, for the road racing, which takes up two weeks. But it did allow some of the teams to go to Notkill to test. Yeah. Uh, the sort of an unofficial official test. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, yeah. It happens near enough every year. Um, a lot of the teams... A lot of the teams do decide to go. It is a bit of a private test, mm. like you man says. It is a bit of an unofficial official test. You don't get any times from it, un, you know, unofficially, mm. officially, if you like. <laughs> um, so yeah, they all seem they all go. Um, and Honda went with uh, Tom and with Andrew, and Andrew's come off a little bit worse for wear, unfortunately. Not the nicest of injuries. No, no, pretty nasty. And it's going to put him out for some time. Uh, it's months, not weeks. And potentially it could be the season, couldn't it? Yeah, right. I, from from what I can gather, it's very much like the injury Mark Marquez sustained to the top of his arm. So it's his humorous. Um, and from what I can gather, he's had a rod put in it, which basically means, for anyone who doesn't know, that rod will now never, ever come out of his arm. Mm. It's stuck there for life. Um, and if he crashes again on it and does some more damage to it is potentially mm. knackered so uh, yeah it's not nice for Andrew and uh, hopefully he does get better soon and we do see him back on a bike before the end of the year it would be great yes Andy we wish you well um, it, it it does beg the question will Honda replace him and we have asked that very question so the official line is we are weighing up the situation to decide what the best solution is for us and as a team uh, and to, oh sorry, as a team, and to coincide with Andrew's race, return to racing at Knock Hill, we will not be fielding a second rider. So, Tom Neve and Tom Neve only. Yes, yeah, sole focus on Tom. Um, just beg the question is if Honda will replace him. Mm. Um, whether if they do or not, it's an extra expense to 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 replace him. Um, it isn't like Motor MotoGP where you have to replace a rider. You know your contract. Chewably obliged to replace a rider, um, and I think that's the same in World Superbikes as well. I think you only get a certain amount of time before you can then uh, have to replace the rider um, before you lose a few other things, tire builds and whatever else. Um, so it's not like that. You don't have to replace the rider. You can just have a one-man team. So it will be quite interesting to see what happens. Um, would not surprise me though if we see Ryuch Kianari <laughs> back in BSB. Um, PR gold, that, yes, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. It would not surprise me, um, but it also wouldn't surprise me as well. If you saw somebody like Franco Bourne, I was going to say right. If you're if you're team. if you were Javier Beltran, are you, is he first on your on your phone? phone um, call? Uh, probably. He's you know he's he's the he's the hottest uh, youngster out there at the moment. Um, I think he is quite close with Harv. Um, yeah, Boast is quite close. Uh, Pete Boast, sorry, um, who sort of looks after uh, Franco Bourne is is quite close with Harv as well. Um, so it, it would not surprise mm. me. It would be a big ask for him, you know. Potentially that's then five races in in, in weekends because obviously three in super, super bike, super three bike in super then. bike, yeah. uh, and potentially two in super stock. It does differ at different rounds. Um, so yeah, maybe I believe there is a test coming up at Cadwell soon for those guys as well. So you might see Franco Bourne having a bit of a run out on a superbike. Uh, who knows? Um, it would be quite cool to see, though. Very much so. And he rides a fireblade already, of course. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't just ride on it. On slicks as well. So Races it. Yeah, yeah. He's on slicks as well, so it's not like it's a big jump. And uh, Honda aren't the only team who are looking to replace yes. a rider, are they? Because, no. speaking of Tom Neve, it's his brother Tim who announced this week that he's taking a break from racing. He's, uh, well, read him between the lines. Well, I, I don't know. You yeah, read him between the lines. It's, I was actually really, really shocked about that. I yeah. actually woke up to a, a press release on Saturday morning, I think it was, mm. um, regarding that news. And, and, and it, it, it proper knocked me for six, actually. Um, I wasn't expecting it. Um, I think uh, Tim's had a real tough start to the season. I think... It, I, probably a lot of people expected a, a bigger things from Tim, um, jumping on, obviously on board the, the the factory Yamaha if you like, mm. and uh, after the the year that he had last year, um, I think he was out not prove a point, but prove that he could ride a big bike, um, as we all know that he can. Um, but he's just had a real real struggle to the first, you know for the first three rounds. Mm. You know, I, you know he's he scored points uh, you know, at times and and shown some real form. 
Um, but yeah, I just think he's just he's just seems to be struggling a little bit. And in the in the video that he released on his social media, if you've not seen that, if you just head over to to Tim's social media and mm. and watch it, it is quite an emotional watch to be to be honest. Um, you know, he, he basically says he doesn't want to be a danger to himself or or to to the other riders on the grid. And um, you know, it takes a brave man to to say that. It takes a brave man to take a step away from racing, um, especially the ride that he had. You know, the 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 McCam Yamaha ride. It's one of the sought after seats on the grid. So to so to give it up um is quite a bold move but but hopefully it's the right decision for Tim and and, and hopefully we see him back on a bike again cuz he's a real nice kid um and and yeah he deserves a lot of success. Mm. Championship winner and bike of course under yep. the uh, Tara McKenzie from 2021 and already a, a race winner this year with Jason O'Halloran. Um they too are looking to replace and again I've been in touch with McCam's team who say they are keen to have a replacement in place from Snetterton onwards, although an official spokesperson didn't rule out, did not rule out a replacement for Not Kill. So probably by the time you're watching this, you might know more than we do right now filming this. Yeah, yeah, potentially if if I pull my finger out and get this edited as quickly as possible <laughs> and online. Um, so yeah, I, I mean that would be uh, something different. Um, I, you know, it's a it's a big it's a big step to to get somebody on on it straight away. But mm. I, I don't believe there's any World Super Sport racing this weekend, so. Mm. You know, I'm only surmising. Um, Taz hasn't had the best of years. So there's a race um, in Scotland. And there's a, yeah, yeah there's, a, yeah, there's a race in Scotland um, for a Scottish, Scottish, shall I mm. say, rider. Um, but it depends on what Taz's contract is with 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 Honda. I don't know what what the deal is. Um, of course. And and again, I'm only purely speculating. You know, someone's having a a, a pretty rough time in the in the you know first year of of World Supersport racing. His beloved Yamaha seat has become available. Mm. You know, it does make you think. Uh, moving on, let's just have a quick a quick natter then about. Uh, we won't won't focus too much on the Isle of Man TT, but it's it's just over. We've just come back. Uh, you did the first half. I did the second half. We literally sort of tagged in, tagged yeah. out, didn't we? At Ronald's way. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what a fortnight it was. Weather wise, was spectacular. It couldn't you couldn't have wished for racing in, or in, in better conditions. And you know, it was sort of the Dunlop and, and Hickman show. It was, yeah, yeah, and it and it sets us up quite nicely to come back to Knock Hill, but it was um, for BSB, but yeah, it was a great two weeks. Um, I, you know, I think it's fair to say nobody expected there to be zero rain on the Isle of Man for two weeks, and even before that, I think they'd had no rain for ten days. So the track was in good condition. Uh, all of the riders that have been were in prime condition. You know, uh, Peter Hickman, obviously. Uh, you know, as, as impressed in BSB so far this year. Dean Harrison's been mega, mega impressive, uh, and Michael Dunlop has been riding the the super sport bike and the stocker and and the super and as well the super bike at Alton Park in preparation for it. David Todd as well, um, Connor, all the, all of the guys that you know the front runners within the TT have been have been racing BSB and and keeping fresh. So, yeah, and I think you I think you saw saw the rewards of that. You know, I mean, a hundred and thirty six point three mm. on a super stock bike. At completely smashing the the outright lap record around the TT was just uh, yeah it was crackers really it, that's the only word I can describe it as was crackers but it was great racing and like like I've just said it, it sets us up nicely to uh, to come back to to Scotland. Mr Hickman must have a very large mantelpiece now for all those trophies. <laughs> yeah, he's got a big camper van front window. That's where they all go. So. Um... TT wise, again, we can kind of segue in nicely here because, uh, of course, the man with 23 TT wins, John McGuinness, he had a sixth, seventh, and eighth, if I remember correctly, and then one DNF um, on the first Superstock uh, race. Yep. He was at Donington Park and he availed himself to us to uh, guide us round the exclusive sort of behind the scenes access of the Honda Racing Garage. Have a look at this. Hey, how's it going? You're at Donington Park here uh, for the third round of the BSP Championship. Glorious sunny day, everybody's enjoying itself, massive crowd, unbelievable crowd to be fair, the atmosphere is absolutely buzzing and here we are at the back of the garages, there are all the trucks, you guys can uh, come and have a walk around here, check out the trucks, I'm a truck fan as well, uh, but we're not allowed in the trucks I don't think, and we're also, you guys are not allowed in the garage, but today we can go in, we've got access to, to go in the garage, some of these fellas in the way here, come on out of it, we are in the garage though, come on, you keep on home, yes, <laughs> I've seen his uh, testicles a few times as well, by the way. He's, he's one of them guys. What have you done now? Got the end of your finger. Hang on, what's this? Look, look at this one here as well. 
That was a rear disc on That's the uh, five blade. It was actually, yeah, you could actually read Nissin on it as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so this is the, sort of the backbone really in, in the back bit here. We've got the tyres, tyre warmers, tyre warmer racks. To be honest, I should really know, shouldn't I? But I know I know they're really, really handy on a cold test day when it's freezing, you can get inside there and get warmed up. But <laughs> that's regulating the tyre pressure, regulating the, the temperatures. Uh, that's all, uh, that's, is that Andy Irwin's side? Yeah, yeah, this is Andy's side. Yeah, Andy's, Andy Irwin's side, the guy's number 18. So he'll have different compound rear, different compound fronts, spare fronts. Of, uh, I think I believe if the race is red flag this year, uh, this race they can put new tyres in or something. So that's a regulation change for, for this round. It's quite abrasive on tyres. So, uh, and then here, what's this? Yes. I should, I should know, should I? That's the PlayStation. No, this, this is monitoring all the tyre pressures for each tyre. We've got every rim. So you get the, get the pressure, tyre, tyre temperature, rim temperature. It's all good stuff. It's top secret stuff. It shouldn't really be filming, but there we go. Never Come on then. On that yeah, note, <laughs> that <way. laughs> yeah, some of the boys is out. I think Eduardo's out here and Roderick, they're looking at squiggly lines, lots of squiggly lines to look at. Uh, throttle traces, suspension potentiometer positions, uh, wheel speeds, uh, just goes on and on and on and on. Does that job? That's like a minefield, but uh, really, really interesting when you get that sat down with your crew chief and uh, have a look through it. We've got this here that uh, obviously they can't keep me off, you know. Well, Andrew uses it, Anton uses it to warm up just before they get on the bike, so never really been my thing. To warm up in my day when I was at Tottenham Game, it was two pints of lager and, uh, and get on the bike. <laughs> Go through to the fancy bit. We've got an Olin technician here as well. He's looking at some small squiggly lines. We've got Scott as well, looking at the computer. Um, so, yeah. I always sometimes think I know what I'm looking at when I'm looking at that, I don't know. I just do a lot of nodding and saying yes, but uh, these guys know exactly what's happening with the bike. Uh, I think that's cool, we've got three, this is Tom Neve's side, Andrew's side, uh, so then, yeah, so what, what then that's happening with the bike now, they've had their first oh, first race on Sunday, which is race two, so the bikes will come in into the garage, they'll just get stripped, cleaned and ready. Uh, it looks like they're in the position now, probably waiting for some information off the crew chief, maybe to change suspension, uh, ride heights, uh, gearing, there's so many different things we can change. Uh, but if they're happy with the bike, they just give them a right good uh, looking through, checking for cracks, check everything else like that. I think Andrew slipped off again in that race too, so the boys will be a little bit busier on that side of the garage. Bodywork here, carbon fibre bodywork, beautiful stuff that. So. Uh, Yeah, lovely. And then they look very similar. They run both, both on the rear thumb brake on the left hand side, which is this, you know, this gadget here. Some of the guys are using the scooter brake and the high clutch uh, lever, but they're both both happy with that. They're both using the shooter swing arms. Beautiful, gorgeous, fabricated swing arm there. Uh, sweet. All in suspension. Where do you, where do you start? Just so much different to a, to a super stock bike, but. Uh, Purpose built suit bike, same bike as I'm going to be riding at the TT next week. So next Monday I'm going to be on Braille on similar sort of bike as this. So well excited. So what sort of differences are there between your bike and this bike? My TT bike, not a lot really, to be honest. Uh, last year I ran a like a, a safe bike. I ran like a kit bike with a kit gearbox and kit uh, kit swing arm. But this year in the test we. Uh, we really like the BSB setup. And last year, Glenn rode his BSB bike at the TT. So he was a bit of a test pilot, really. We were a bit unsure about a few things, but everything came back from the TT with Glenn in good shape. So that's given me confidence to use more of the of a BSB bike. So uh, very much similar to these. Yeah, with Multec Electronics, suit to swing arm, the same gearbox, uh, same engines, the same fuel tank. The fuel tanks are, I'm not really sure. To, don't quote me on that one. We have to have a 24 litre fuel tank to get, uh, I'm not really sure what size they are. I mean, they may be 20 litres, but we need 24 to do two laps of the TT. But yeah, same brakes. We have a slightly shorter exhaust for the TT that gives us more noise, which sounds amazing. Uh, and uh, a little bit more power as well. So, cool. <laughs> what about the pit lane? Gonna have a little look at pit lane, I mean, look at the start of the Superstock race as well coming up. So. The atmosphere in the paddock and the, in the pit lane this, this weekend has been amazing. I'm having fun. I'm working harder than I'm doing when I'm normally racing. So uh, 
Robert. No, I'm having a great weekend. I hope you guys have all enjoyed this uh, little garage tour and uh, we'll see you next time at Knock Hill. Good, how about that? Some nice little insight, wasn't it, from Mr McGuinness? Thank you very much for that. Uh, moving on, well, look, let's just um, rewind a little. Uh, we've talked about the successes of Carl Ride at Donington Park and that puts him fifth now in the championship, uh, a mere 10 points uh, behind leader Tommy Bridewell. And it's, look, we've already talked about it, it's been so close. But uh, look, here's what Kyle had to say at Donington. All right, uh, two wins from three, Donington Park. You must be over the moon, a real solid weekend for you, just talk us through it. Yeah, the only little thing that went wrong was the little tip off turn one, apart from that I've not missed an apex all weekend, so great job by the team, um, not not just for fixing the bike, but obviously for giving me a great package all weekend. Um, yeah, it's just a bit of a shame about the, the race that we fell off, also we probably could have been leading the championship, but no. The races we did finish, we won, so that's a great thing to take to, to the next round. Have you come here with a lot of confidence? Because obviously after the test and, and certainly last year as well, the pace that you showed, did, did you know just how strong you were going to be this weekend? Um, the confidence has been the same all the way through the season. Um, just this track seems to suit me a little bit better. Um, so yeah, when a track comes to you where it suits you a little bit more and you seem to get a bit more pace, you've got to make the most of it. So two out of three wins, I think we did that. The new surface as well, obviously it's proved how good it is and mm. the worth of it, that the lap the lap that you put in in qualifying was I think 1.3 under the lap record yeah. and what one point, it was near enough a second under the best ever lap, so yeah. were you, how surprised were you at how, how good that lap time was in qualifying? Yeah, obviously I, I did um, a high 28 in qualif uh, no, sorry in testing when it was like 7 degrees, so I know, I know it was going to be really fast. So. Yeah, like I said, did a great job of the of the surface. It's um, the reason why they did it. Obviously, it was a nice ring in the wet, and uh, the first weekend we've come racing right here, it's been sunny all weekend. So, yeah, I'm sure when it does rain here and we're here, there's going to be a lot of grip. Um, but yeah, great job by everyone for doing doing the track. It's like a snooker table, as I've said all weekend. It's very smooth, suits my style, and uh, yeah, I'm just proud of myself for, for bouncing back, getting that win in front of all my family and friends. Well, we, we know how much you're really smooth, so it's obviously just going from one bigger to another. Yeah, I'll, so. I'll, I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> um, you switched to the Zero rear. Yeah, I've been on it all weekend. All this, all this all weekend. All weekend, yeah. Were you nervous about doing that? Because obviously you don't really, nobody really uses the Zero, it's always the X. So were you slightly nervous about that? I, I come on my practice bike here about three weeks ago with a, a tyre that was pretty rubbish. Um, way worse than what a Zero is. And I couldn't get it to spin. So the track's obviously got a lot of grip. So I made the decision before we even come, we was going to run the Zero. So the only time I used an X was for Super Pole. And even then, I probably still think I could have done it on a zero. There's that much grip. So, yeah, uh, great weekend. Like I said, um, we did everything perfect. We uh, did a race run at the start of the weekend. Everything was bang on, just except for that that, that little tip off. But um, I can deal with that after winning two races. Let's talk about the little tip off thing because it, it seemed very un, uncharacteristic. And I yeah. think you said earlier that you were very surprised with, with where it came from. Yeah, the, on the data, it's exactly the same. Forks in the same place, pulling the same brake pressure. I'm going one kilometre faster, which is absolutely naff all. So, yeah, I think I just got caught out a little bit maybe with the fuel load, taking a bit of weight off the, the front tyre. I was in a little bit of a groove and braking early, getting a good exit, and it just caught me out. There was no chance of saving it after picking up the throttle with the front. So, yeah, um, I'm glad we did it. I'm, I'm glad I crashed now because we fixed the bike, made it a bit better in the areas that I felt a bit vague, and, yeah, we ended up winning. So, great for when we come back here in a few months. When you mentioned there earlier about the practice bike, how important was that for you coming into this weekend that you'd, you'd been here in, I suppose, decent weather, kind of same, similar conditions to today, so you kind of knew, first of all, you were sort of a little bit on the front foot because you'd already been here in these conditions? Yeah, like you see with Jason yesterday, running the, Z, uh, the X, sorry, and then going to the Zero today, his weekend basically started um, this morning, so, but my weekend started on Friday, luckily I come and did a few laps around the track and understood how much grip there was. And I knew that we could get away with the zero. So, in all fairness, yeah, I probably had a, an, an extra day on the right tyres compared to anyone else. But as you've seen, um, me, Leon, and Tommy was on the right tyres in every race, and we were as fast in all of them. And a few others got quicker towards the weekend, got on. So, yeah, great job by myself for coming and doing a bit of testing, and obviously the team. Let's look ahead to the next round then. Um, Knockhill, 
probably not one of everybody's favourite circuits, but just after two wins from three here and the performance you're showing, how much confidence are you taking into to the next round to try and boost yourself back into that more or less a championship yeah. winning condition? Yeah, knock it'll be, it'll be good. My bike's better than what it was last year, so I'm not overthinking about it. Um, just do what I've been done, doing here. Um, just go out, test the bike, see where we end up in FP1. Um, simple. I've got a lot of, load of confidence, so there's no reason why I can't be on the podium again. A little bit of time off now ahead of that round. What, what have you got planned? A load of snooker or load of I, cycling? Or yeah, I've got a good friend. I've got a good friend who's a pro cyclist, so I'll do a bit of that. I'll definitely do a bit of snooker. And uh, yeah, bits and bobs, dominoes on a Wednesday night with Grandad. Other things, but yeah, no, it's it, time flies by, so it'll be good. There we are, Kyle Ride, fifth in the championship now, and looking to close the gap, uh, the very, very small gap. He was actually one of the people that we did see, one of the many BSB riders we did see on the Isle of Man. He was there supporting Paul Jordan. Uh, it was an incredibly hot day, he was on the grid and wearing a, some kind of fisherman's hat. Um, <laughs> Danny Buckham was another one. Uh, parading around that is very easy, hard, hard to miss, isn't he? Yeah, he stands tall above everybody else. And and he's a man who goes well traditionally at Knock Hill. He definitely does. I'm glad that was a nice segue into that because that was the one person, if you were going to ask me who's <laughs> going to impress this weekend, I was going to say Danny Booking straight away. Um, yeah, Danny's uh, always one of the hot ones around around Knock Hill. Um, I honestly couldn't tell you why, and I don't think he could probably tell you why either. I don't know whether it's his height the way the BMW works, but even then he did really well when he was with the FS3 Kawasaki team a few years ago there. So I just think the circuit just suits Danny. Um, it, it, you know, it's not really, too, it's physical, mm. um, but it's not massively technical, if you know what I mean. Um, so I think maybe that suits him and the way, he, uh, his style on the bike. Maybe it is, maybe it's about strength and, yeah, yeah. and, and height and you know the physicality of it all. Um. I'm trying to think now off the top of my head how well the likes of like Scott Redding did because he's a pug tall fan. Yeah, Scott Scott did really well when he mm. when he went there. I don't think he'd really ever been there and he, yeah. and, he and he impressed. Um, well, I mean, let's be fair. Scott impressed wherever he went mm. in 2019. Um, I think he impressed everybody to be honest. But yeah, I, I you know I can see Danny doing well this weekend. Um, you know, I, I don't really think you can forget the 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 test that was there a few weeks ago. So. Uh, all of the teams, more or less, all of the teams were there, um, barring a few, uh, you know, anomalies that were at the at the TT or whichever yeah. else. Um, Jason O'Halloran had a, a really good time there last year. He'd never won there up until last year, and so he got that monkey off his back. Um, from what I can gather, tested really well there the other uh, a few weeks ago. Um, so he's he's heading there with a lot of confidence. Um, the one team that didn't go, and I was quite surprised at that. I'm, I've, think they didn't go was fs3 right. um i was a little bit surprised at that um maybe they're just confident heading into the weekend um i definitely don't remember seeing any social media of them there so i could be wrong i'm sure somebody out there will pop in the comments that i am wrong if i am wrong mm. um but lee jackson i think he's you know he's one that's going to run strong there um leon haslam again you know leon's one to watch out for this year um he did definitely test there i know that for sure um, so yeah, it, it will be interesting to see this weekend. I think. Well, that's the part and parcel of, of, of why we love BSB so yeah, much, isn't it? Yeah. Sorry, Bennett's that, BSB. I think that I think that goes to show with just you know ten points covering the top five. Quite right. Good, fine. You're going to Knock Hill, aren't you? Oh, we will have yes. we will have a, a Bennett's contingent there. So if you see if you're going to Knock Hill as well and see Mr. Burton around, uh, don't forget to ask for a selfie. He loves that. <laughs> uh, we've got some bike social customers who are primed and ready to go. So uh, we hope you enjoy your hospitality and your experiences there. Speaking of which, if you're a bike social member, then we've got um, availability with our experiences. So you can win the likes of hospitality, course car laps, pillion rides, yep. grid access. Uh, pit lane tours what have I missed anything uh, no from, from the competitions you've got everything covered on that side so we've got Thruxton uh, Cadwell Thruxton and Alton Park are all yep. available and open now so if you're a bike social member get to the membership page uh, log in and then you can enter for as many as you like to win as many uh, yeah yeah experiences as you like yeah bikesocial.co.uk forward slash join if you are yet to become a member um, then where after that it's Snetterton isn't it for round six uh, yes yeah. yeah 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 and that's uh, middle of July ish 
Yeah, um, 7th to the 9th of July. I there we go, 7th like to the 9th of July. And at what point, Michael, do they start to um, accrue more points for wins? Uh, so that will be... Me, it's not till the sort of showdown, is it? It's, yeah, it's the so final it two. will be the final two. Oh, it's Alton, it even says on there. there Alton go. and so Donington. Yeah, Alton and Donington uh, for, yeah, so the final two rounds uh, and then the finale at Brands Hatch mm. where you get, I think, 35 for a win, yeah. something like that. So really, I mean, at the minute, it's setting itself up to be, uh, you know, the the right decision to change the showdown format yeah. um, because it's proving it's worth, you know, 10 points covering the top five. Um, and even then, if you look at it, really, there's only 40, 49, uh, Lee Jackson and, and, and Jason O'Halloran on the same points, actually, as well in sixth and seventh, mm. and they're only 49 back. So really, I mean, if you get, you know, uh, a, a bit of a, a, a nightmare weekend for the Ducatis and Leon and, and Kyle... And those guys, you know, first and second, they're, they're going to claw themselves back mm. into it. And mm. you're going to see, you know, potentially seven or eight people vying for the championship, which is Good. what everybody wants. So after Knock Hill, we'll be back here again for the next uh, episode of the BSB show. And if there is anything you would like to see us uh, shoot from around the paddock, uh, be that um, people or bikes or behind the scenes or in garages or with the medical team or the people that run the show or whatever it is, let us know. And if you've got any comments or thoughts or queries or questions, we'll be only too glad to help you out. So, yeah, leave them in the, in the section below. But, yeah, for now, thank you, sir. No, thank you. Uh, enjoy Not Kill. See you next time.